This happened a few years ago. I was working at a large national chain restaurant as a manager. I was asked to temporarily reassign to a location in a city about an hour away and accepted. They put me up in a hotel. The whole nine yards. The first weekend I was there, I discovered that the GM had screwed up and not ordered any change, small bills slash rolls of coins, for the safe, and that the local branch of our bank would be closing in the next hour. I also happened to have a personal account at the same bank, and had, in the past, gone and gotten change from the branch back home. Since time was tight, I quickly looked up the address of the bank, grabbed $800, and jumped in my car. I get to the bank, wait in line, and then ask them to make change, $400 in $5 bills, $300 in $1 bills, and $100 in assorted rolled coins. The teller tells me that the bank doesn't make change. Me, thinking it was because they didn't know me, informed her that our restaurant had an account she could look up. She then told me, no, we don't make change at all. The thought going through my brain was, WTF. You are a bank. I tried explaining the situation, but was quickly shot down. I left, went back to my car, then had an idea. I went back inside the bank with my personal checkbook, got to the front of the line, and, luckily, the same teller. Before she could even greet me, I told held out my checkbook and told her, I would like to close this account, since this bank is no longer customer service oriented. She kind of rolled her eyes, but went about my request. Then she asked how I wanted my cash back, an automatic response, I'm sure, and one I was counting on. I said, $400 in $5 is, $300 in $1, $70 in rolled quarters, $25 in rolled dimes, $4 in rolled nickels, and $1 in rolled pennies. The rest can be on a cashier's check. No reason for her to deny it, so I got my change. And the following Monday, I returned, closed out the other two accounts I had there, and I opened accounts at a different bank, where I have been banking ever since. So I had some attendance issues at an old job. Not really, the policy was that within 5 minutes of the shift is still considered on time. Well I had a manager who wanted to abruptly change corporate policy, and define clearly that late equals late. So background, it's retail and I'm in my senior year of college. I'm not making a career out of this job, and I'm 5 years older than all of my coworkers. My immediate manager felt threatened by me, as I had previously declined leadership positions to finish school. He always had something he needed to fix about me, even though I had 7 straight months of rocks to performance, exceeding metrics by plus 10% above goal, and I frequently aided in training new employees. Once again, this was a college filler not a career move for me. I'm not a bad employee. However, I was a busy employee. My last semester working there I had 5 classes, and would be usually within a minute or two to my shift. So manager one day specifies I'm late, it's 3.01 and my shift starts at 3 o'clock, to which I said marginally, D, in front of other coworkers decides he's gonna put his foot down. No, combustible gear duck one minute late is late. So I stopped my task and calmly asked him, then what does it mean when I'm staying 45 minutes after my shift to help when we are short staffed? And he said, we don't even want to have this conversation right now and left. To be fair he's not wrong. He handled the situation wrong. If he wanted me to change something we could have talked in private. He wanted to swing dicks in front of the new hires. So I complied. I made it a point to clock in and out exactly when my shift starts and ends. It's glorious. A couple weeks later he tells me I need to do something 2 minutes before my shift ends. So I start the task and 2 minutes later I said, sorry manager, my shift is over. Clocked out and left. My man said is go ahead, try to fire the best looking employee on paper for working exactly his shift and not a second longer. He didn't want to swing dicks after that. small act of malicious compliance from a few years ago I still enjoy chuckling about today. My husband and I bought our first home, and I got my dream of kitting it out in Ikea furniture, some yearn for bigger things in life, this was my middle class dream. We live far away, 2.5 hours drive, from Ikea and had ordered quite a bit of kit, so we splurged on delivery. Delivery day arrives, and the truck rolls up to our house. 
Now we have a two story house, and had ordered two wardrobes, a bed, mattress, armor for upstairs and six bookcases with doors, a large lounge chair, 12 wall cabinets and a large TV cabinet for downstairs. It was a lot of flat pack. Delivery man, where would you like the boxes? Me, I need some upstairs and some downstairs please. I can tell you which is which, when I see the boxes come in. I know what's what, because I'd already seen them at the Ike when we bought them before delivery. Delivery man, can't do that, we only deliver them to one room. Me, then I'll have them all upstairs please. Needless to say delivery man quickly changed his mind. So it all starts in primary school. I had done something to piss my father off, neither he nor I know what it was as it has been over 10 years. He was angry enough to forbid me from using electronics for a month. My mother as well as myself found the punishment to be excessive for what I did, but my father had a row of bad days and exploded easily if you pushed him far enough. Here comes the malicious compliance. He forbid me from using any electronics. So being the smartest I am, I packed every electronic device in a box and put it under my bed with all of them turned off. I could get up early without any alarm, but it never worked all the time. Some information about the situation. I used to wake everyone up by getting up in the morning and going to take a shower. And I made breakfast for me and my brother. So after a week with no electronics, it finally happened. I woke up an hour late, I woke my father up an hour late, and I did not have time to make breakfast for school. My father was not happy to be late, but accepted it as a mishap, that would happen rarely anyways. But all continued, after I arrived at school for the third period. My teacher was very angry, because I arrived so late, and I was punished, by having to do extra homework. Now comes the best part. This day was a project day right before the fall break. We had the same teacher for the day. One part of this day was a movie that was important for the lessons to come after it, and the teacher would discuss it with us over the last week before the break. She got the TV and switched it on. But I left the room. The teacher followed me and tried to tear me a new one for leaving, but I told her that I had been forbidden from using any electronics for 3 more weeks and that I wouldn't do anything until I was not punished anymore. My teacher was strict, but knew that I was a stubborn bastard, and that she would have to call my father to lift the punishment. So she called my father as I refused that as well and instead of doing it to me to him a new one for not being specific. My father then asked to be put on speaker, and lifted the punishment entirely. It seems that he had had enough of me being a smartest at that point. While in high school I worked at a family owned franchise of a national chain restaurant as a busboy, dishwasher, cook, host. Occasionally the general and assistant manager would both need the same day off, and the owner's adult children would take turns filling in as manager. They were all young, youngest being 18 and the oldest being mid-twenties, but polite, hardworking, and smart. This happened on one of those days. They had an all-you-can-eat buffet as an option for lunch one day. I overheard a lady complaining to the oldest son, who was acting manager that day, that the buffet was horrible, she couldn't eat it, and didn't want to pay. She was being loud, and swearing at him so I said, ma'am, you went to the buffet four times, and I cleared four empty plates off of your table. The manager told her he would not remove the charge from her bill as she had eaten multiple helpings, and didn't complain, until it was time to pay. She went apoplectic, and demanded to speak to the manager. When he told her, that he was the manager she demanded to speak to his boss, and that she would have his job. He pulled out his cell phone, dialed a number, and when the call connect, said loud enough for the customer to hear, Mom, this lady wants you to fire me, and then held the phone out to the customer. He didn't get fired, and that customer did not come back, but she did pay. The company that I worked for had its work year for leave allocation between January 1st and December 31st. The industry I work in, UK construction, shuts down over the Christmas break, so you have mandatory leave taken out of your allowance. That's not a problem. I have 25 days leave to take, and the year in question was mad. I never had a chance to take any leave, and was managing to recharge on the national holidays through the year with the odd day off here and there to pad it out. 
we get to August, and I have put a week in for September which has been approved, but then I'm allocated to a job starting at the beginning of September. They need me to work that holiday. I'm reluctant, and I warn the GM that, if I don't get a chance to take summer leave, that I will be finishing that year at the start of December. GM says that's fine. So I start the project which is programmed to go into the following year. The project is going well, but every two weeks I feel the management out for cover, so I can take some time off, no dice, everyone is hammered. So at the start of November I put my holiday request in, to use up my leave, and it gets approved. Bingo. After that each week I email the project manager and GM that I will be finishing on the 4th of December and they need to line someone up for a handover and cover the month. Ignored. Don't care. We will look at it later. 3rd of December rolls up. I call the GM to wish him a good holiday and I will see him in the new year. GM starts panicking. There is no one lined up for cover and no one available to drop in. There has been no handover so no one is up to speed on the project's nuances. Long story short he agreed to pay overtime. Now this firm hates the idea of paying overtime, unless it is for weekend work or overnight. The manager actually wanted me to defer my leave until the next year, but the company also had a use it or lose it approach to leave. I wasn't going for that so for that month I was being paid for my normal day as pay leave and flat rate overtime for the hours worked. That's double time for a day shift for a month. It gets better, because on the day before the project shuts down for the Christmas break the GM calls me. He needs someone to do a night shift with confined space qualification. At the time in the department, that was only me, to supervise a contractor carrying out a survey for 6 hours. Convo as follows. Me what is the overtime? GM what do you want? Me double time and a half. GM that's fine. Me bugger, you agree to quick. So the day after I worked the last day that year on the inner tail project at double time, I left home at 0600, I get home at 1800 for a quick meal and a shower, one half hour, and I'm back out the door, 1830, arriving. At this other location at 1930, worth noting that travel hours are on the clock, this isn't commuting. Contractor sets up to do this survey. They finished at 0500 the following day. I got home at 0630 and collapsed onto my bed. To summarize that day alone, I got my 8 hours pay leave plus 12 hours up plus 12 hours at 2.5 times, 30 hours. In 24.5 hours I took pay for 50 hours. It was a good month. At the time I took about 2 grand a month home. For that month I think I took 7.5 grand. They actually had a problem with paying the overtime, so that it did not show up as a massive breach in hours worked regulation. If you enjoyed the stories, slap the like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.